Hello everybody, Alexandre Belmar and Olivier Danjou back with you after a while. This week we're gonna talk about similarities and differences between iOS devices and Android's one. So if you're looking to purchase a new mobile device and want to learn more about accessibility of these two operating systems, this podcast is especially designed for you. Enjoy! Hello everybody, hope you're doing well. Olivier Danjou with you today. I'm with Alex, he's at home right now. We're spending the Easter weekend together. Hi Alex. Hello, hope you're doing well. Are you ready to participate to a discussion about what you like or dislike about Android and iOS? Uh, what the hell is that? I don't know, I think there is a second Alex. It was a prank. <laughs> Today we are April 1st. Yeah, so we decided to make a small prank with the uh, Alex uh, US voice. Olivier was uh, <laughs> happy to uh, did the prank with the uh, Alex US voice. But uh, don't worry, I'll be the one who will animate this uh, podcast with Olivier. So we are going to discuss about iOS versus Android, what we like about each system, what we don't like, and we will share our personal preferences. And we have uh, different opinions about the ecosystems in general, so that might be interesting. Great, and what we should uh, discussing first about? Well, we should start by listing the device either that we own or that we owned in the past. Sure, maybe I can start with mine. First of all, I start using an iPhone in uh, 2010 with an iPhone 4. So I'm changing iPhone approximately every two years. And uh, so I switched to iPhone 5, iPhone 5S, iPhone 6S, and iPhone 8 right now. But I was also able to test several models years after years of iPhone. And also I bought two iPad mini, an iPad mini 1 and an iPad mini 2 second generation and regarding Android I start with a Nexus 7 tablet then I've purchased a Moto G then now I have a Pixel XL and also I've tried devices like LG and uh, I think this is it for Android. As for me I started with an iPod Touch 4 then I got an iPhone 4S, I got the 5S, and now I have the iPhone 8. As for my Android devices, I started with a Samsung Galaxy S3. Then uh, I didn't like the Samsung interface, so I um, got a Moto G, which I sold the... Uh, maybe a year ago, a Moto G first generation, then I got a Moto G third generation, which I gave to my brother recently, and I got a Google Pixel approximately a year ago, which I still have, by the way, and I continue to use it, even though my SIM card is in my iPhone 8, I will tell you why later on in the podcast. Because as you will know later on, I prefer Android over iOS. But I will give you some explanations about why I'm using iOS daily. And you forgot, Alex, you have your Braille Note Touch. Yes, it's true. Uh, the Braille Note Touch is an, it's an Android device made by Humanware. It's running Android 4.4.2, but uh, it's not similar like to a real Android phone made by Google, like a Pixel, because the screen reader, it's quietly different. It's Keysoft. 
it's uh let's say an overlay to the operating system however it's a different menu it's like if you compare let's say a google phone like a pixel compared to a samsung speaking of samsung i also have a samsung tablet because i wanted to test voice assistant which is the screen reader made by samsung i might cover it in a future podcast but this is not very in my opinion i don't like this screen reader but i may cover it yes maybe we should talk about in a separate podcast because it's uh, quite a bit different and uh, yes so maybe we can talk about this one a bit later so maybe we can start with what i like about android well this is not gonna be everything but the first thing i like about android is that this is an open operating system like for example if you want to download files you can download them and you have a downloads folder you can access your file system for example files related to application for example if you buy eloquence or vocalizer and you want to have access to the pronunciation dictionaries for example if you want to add one well you can and to copy data from your phone to your computer with android it's so much easier than with ios because you can do copy and paste however to restore the device meaning if you want to reinstall the software using a computer because android devices are manufactured by many manufacturers procedures are different and this is much harder to do than with apple devices yes however you were talking about an open system open system can bring you some viruses or threats so you need to pay more attention about what you're doing on the system yes you can enter the phone using copy paste with a simple usb cable however you'll have the possibility to broke the phone compared to the connection offered via itunes and personally with itunes i'm not using itunes a lot right now because with apple music subscription i can have all the music i want on the phone or it is possible to import some music using let's say a dropbox a onedrive whatever and listen to it directly on the device yes but what i don't like about apple you know is that most of their things that they make are exclusive to apple products for example the homepod the connected speaker that they launched to be in competition with the google home only works with apple devices also apple watch only work with apple devices and this is unfortunate because the apple watch is accessible and the progress on android wear is not well according to what i know i did not test an android wear watch but the progress i don't know if it's as good as apple with voiceover on the apple watch i'm not sure it is because i heard some persons who test this in the past and they were a bit disappointed about it and uh, so it's really different regarding the accessibility of watch and things like this ios and apple are offering a really great solution that we don't have on android on android at all however google is improving this with versions of talkback and that brings me to another point because 
we must say it for those uh, for our listeners who don't know it or maybe they did not notice it you hate android Yes, I hate Android because of stability that is absent. Especially since the latest version of Google they launch it is the Aureo version, Android version 8. I got many 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 problems related to the accessibility. Let's say that I reset my phone I can't reset it in French because as soon as you select the French language, no more voice is available. You'll have a voice in English, you select French and then tick, 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 no more voice, no more voice. You just hear the uh, sound from TalkBack. Yeah, because if you set up an Android phone and if you're a blind user or visually impaired, you will need to set up the phone in English first and then change it to your language that you want to use. However, even if you set up the, the phone in English, you change to French, you're doing some update a bit later, I lost without notice the French voice, the Google French voice, the French TTS without any notice and I was a bit stuck to retrieve the voice. So if you're not a Braille user, you don't have a Braille display, it's gonna be really 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 hard to retrieve the voice. You'll have to ask for sighted person who can assist you with that. So I don't know what Google are doing but there is a lot of bug regarding accessibility and stability of the accessibility that's a bit annoying I really don't know what they are doing with this but oof, really and um, how the screen and elements are placed are accessible can be used they need to do a lot of progress on their hand. Yeah, but um, don't forget that TalkBack is more open than VoiceOver is. Because TalkBack is an open source screen reader, meaning everybody can have access to the source code and modify it. That's what Samsung are doing and maybe other companies as well. But with TalkBack, you can modify the behaviors of certain gestures. You can modify the behavior of certain gestures. Just before we talk about this, I just want to mention that some hotter screen readers are available on Android, like let's say mobile accessibility, uh, voice assistant, what else? Shine Plus. Yeah, right, that I did not test yet, but other screen readers are accessible. Uh, talking about gestures, that's an harder thing that sometimes I'm finding a bit difficult for clients who want to use gestures. Maybe, Olivier, you can explain what is gestures in two parts. Yeah, so for that I will refer you to the podcast that I made earlier this year on TalkBack. But, for example, to invoke the global context menu, you need to swipe your finger down, then right, without lifting it. Alert global context menu, showing items 1 to 9 of 9. So, we're gonna go to the talkback settings. And just before I forget... Add dim screen, then uh, cancel. We're gonna go there dim languages, text to speech, talkback settings, talkback settings. Okay. So, just before I forget, another thing that I like about Android is that you can have the possibility to choose your favorite text-to-speech. So, multiple text-to-speech are available. Right now, we are using Alex uh, Pixel because mine is in my bedroom and we are in my basement. But on the Play Store, you have multiple text-to-speech available like 
Alex is using eloquence. Talk back settings. This is eloquence. Maybe you can switch to uh, Google Voice uh, just to to show everybody. Yeah, and for me on my Pixel, I'm using a vocalizer, which is also available. And if you want, you can have a cappella voices, iPhone voices, Voxision voices, so you can switch between certain text-to-speech engine so maybe one day you're feeling oh i want to use eloquence and maybe the other day oh i would like to use ava well you can and on ios you're stuck with nuanced voices so this is not a problem if you like them like me i absolutely love nuanced voices but if you don't like them you're kind of stuck with it but stuck but not at the same time because in English you have the Apple voices like for example Alex yes but uh, they are also available in French because you can use uh, voice from uh, Siri no problem Siri's voice are available in French Canadian as well as in French France so in many languages you can uh, use Siri voice but on Android there is a lot of choice available regarding TTS there is a lot of possibility what I like also is that you can choose your default apps on Android so let's say you have multiple web browsers like Chrome and Firefox install you can choose Firefox to be your default browser now I will switch to Google text to speech alert global context Language text to speech text to speech settings preferred engine ETIL preferred engine checked ETIL not checked check using Google text to speech engine so this is the male voice usually this is a female voice but I don't know why Alex doesn't seem to have it anymore I still have it but I just turn it off uh, because I don't know, but it's a bit... I don't know how she speaks, so I prefer the male voice from Google. But uh, yes, you can go ahead and enable it. It's a bit tired to listen to it. Like, it's a uh, very, like, let's say, hard voice. Like, ha I don't know, but it's a bit bad to listen. So, do you want me to switch it back to Eloquence? Yes, maybe. Alert global context menu. Text to speech setting. Preferred engine. Not checked. ETI. Alert attend. Okay. But Using ETI Eloquence TTS. Pre back. Text to speech set. Back. Talk back settings. And maybe now let's go into the gesture settings of TalkBack. We'll show you how we can reassign some gestures. Vibration feedback. Sound. Audio. Sound. Navig show. Explore. Automatic. Single. Show. TalkBack. Gestures. Gestures. Navigate up. Button. Gestures. Shortcut gestures. And list. 26 items. Swipe up. Previous navigation setting. So now we can reassign some gestures. Let's continue and we'll uh, select a gestures and two movement. Swipe down, next navigation setting. Swipe left, previous item. Swipe right, next item. Swipe up and down, focus first item on screen. Let's open this one. Alert, swipe up and down. Swipe up, checked, focus first item on screen, and list, 22 items. And then you'll see the options that these gestures can perform. Focus last item on screen. Scroll back. Scroll forward. Previous navigation setting. Next navigation setting. Back button. Home button. Overview button. Open notifications. All Open right. quick settings. Many of them are available. Open global context menu. Open local context menu. Read from top. Read from next item. Show actions. Editing. Languages. Perform click. Cancel button out of list. Okay, maybe we'll click cancel and we'll select another gestures. Gestures. Swipe left and right. Scroll back and list. 26 items. Swipe right and left. 
Swipe up then right. Open. Swipe up then left. Hop. Swipe. Swipe. Swipe left. Previous item. Swipe down. Swipe Let's left. Select Previous item. Swipe left. And you'll see that the actions that you can assign to this gesture will be quite a bit different. Alert. Swipe left. Swipe left. Checked. Previous item. Next item. Focus first item on. Focus last item on screen. Scroll back. Scroll forward. Previous navigation setting. Next navigation setting. Back button. Home button. Overview button. Open notifications. Open quick settings. Open global context menu. Open local context menu. Read from top. Read from next item. Show actions. Editing. Languages. Perform click. Cancel button out of list. And there we go. So you can see that some actions are different depending the gestures you are selecting. And another thing that it's important to say is that system apps on Android update independently from the system. And for me, this is something that I like. Because say for example, that you are on Android 6.0 Marshmallow, you will still be able to access to the latest version of TalkBack. And let's say you're using Chrome and the Google Chrome app is updated. Even if you're not on the latest version, you will get the update. Yes, that's pretty cool for this. I just want to roll back a bit about gestures. About gestures on iOS, you have multiple finger gestures up to three and four fingers. And you have also the roller. On iOS, just let you know, you can personalize the rotor as much as you want however you cannot modify gestures that are available except of the router where you can remove or add some options so in some cases it can be a bit easier for somebody with ios to use gestures except if the person has some difficulties with the router However, if this person has some difficulties with the router, it's not going to be easier with Android with gestures in two parts. So yes, regarding the app in Android, you can also update apps separately to the system. And another great point about this one is that you can also uninstall an update that you don't like and roll back to a previous version of an app. So if you install an update, it's causing you some troubles. You can roll back to the previous version before you've installed the upgrade. Just be careful with that because it will remove, it will roll back to the factory version if this is a system app. Oh yes, if it's a system app, it will. Yes, yeah, sure. But if it's an app that you install, usually it will keep the previous version. No, it won't. You will need the APK file to do it. Yes, however, if you keep APK file, there is a way to extract them. You'll be able to revert to a previous version, which will be completely impossible with iOS. Yes, and just so our listeners know, APK files are like files.exe on Windows. So this is the kind of format of file that when you open this kind of file, it will say, do you want to install this app? And you click install and it will install. So there's a way to back up an APK. And I could do it on the podcast in the future. In the future, I could show it to you. That could be interesting. Yeah, let us know if you're interested about this. And maybe if you are, we'll be able to do a podcast about this one. Uh, maybe talking about installing app from a file. Another great point of Android is the possibility to install a complete file manager on the, the, on the device. Yeah, definitely. So I was speaking, if you want to access like eloquence, data or whatever, if you want to access your music with a file manager, you can. Uh, what's also 
bad with Android is talk back. It's not sometimes giving all the information needed when navigating using TalkBack in certain app or on certain website. I know that when using TalkBack with Google Chrome on some website, it's a bit missing some information. So it's a bit primitive. And I think also uh, you got some issues with some applications and TalkBacks. Well, I got some issues with Braille more specifically because Google seemed to be more focused on TalkBack than they are on BrailleBack. For example, I recently got the new Focus 5th Gen and I am unable to type on the, on the Focus keyboard. And speaking of keyboard, when you want to type Let's say you want to type in Braille. You cannot type in Braille and at the same time have a virtual keyboard on the screen. It's either one or the other. And this is frequent that when I navigate with Braille back, sometimes it just freezes and says, oh, Braille back has stuff. So, yes, they are other alternatives to braille back i mean to have braille there are other alternatives however i did not test them yet i i might do it when i will have more time but yeah i mean google have serious work to do and i was telling you uh, that uh, my sim card is currently in my iphone that's mainly because of Braille, because Alex, you showed me a cool feature called Braille Screen Input, which basically allows users to type in Braille on the screen. On Android, this is possible to do it. However, it's kind of a nightmare to do, because you have to turn TalkBack off or to suspend it, and then you have to type your message and then re-enable it and it's not as fluid as voiceover allows it. Yes, uh, yeah. Uh, app has stop on Android. Yes, I can see this uh, crazy message on many devices. Uh, that's a bit annoying. Yes, it is. And regarding Braille, yes, it's really primitive. It's not working well. Maybe for reading you can do something, it can help you, but if you're trying to type or if you want to use it, let's say to take some notes, it's not a be reliable. And yes, regarding the real screen input, there is an application on Android that will allow you to do so soft braille keyboard however you'll have to turn off talkback each time you want to use the keyboard because talkback will not be able to transfer gestures to this specific application so it's not gonna work properly and uh, same thing for many apps that need a specific gestures you'll have to turn off talkback to be able to use these apps Another thing that's sad, but this is not because of Google. This is that developers seem to be more aware of the accessibility and they seem to take accessibility more seriously on iOS than on Android. And some applications like WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger will not give you the same results on iOS as they will on Android. So to do that, I'm going to send you a WhatsApp message on your iPhone and we will see that VoiceOver is able to see when the message is played and when the message has not been played yet. Yes, uh, maybe you can send a message but it's not only developers. I think it's Google 
entirely. You know, first of all, Google, you don't have any accessibility lines. I called them a bit earlier regarding an issue resetting a Pixel XL. There's a menu that allows you to reset a phone in case of a problem. They were unable to give me a procedure or oh, please find a sighted person. It will assist you to reset the phone. So it was very difficult for them to give me an accessible procedure to perform some things. And yes, some developers need to improve accessibility of their apps but google in general needs the accessibility is more primitive on android i think so instead uh olivier sent me a message on whatsapp i'll go ahead and send a message to him right now olivier danjou voice message duration chats voice message button double tap and hold to record recording locked hey hello how are you doing send there we go so he should receive my message in a few seconds he'll go ahead and read it compose Let's camera see, right share now. media your vo voice message your voice ahead. message vo your vo share media so just before you'll go ahead and read it your voice message duration two seconds 11 28 p.m deliver to recipient current position zero seconds so deliver to recipient two seconds so now he'll go ahead and read it so now I click share media. It, your voice message duration but I did two not seconds play it eleven yet. twenty-eight PM seen by recipient current seen. position zero seconds. But oh, this is two not seconds. played. No I will play it. Your voice message duration two seconds eleven twenty-eight PM played by recipient current played. position zero so seconds on Android oh, two seconds. Talkback will know when the recipient seen it, but it will not make the difference when the message was either seen by recipient or played by recipient. And there's a lot of things similar to this kind of issues where Talkback miss some information. Let's say, for example, on Messenger, that is quietly horrible, as well as on Facebook itself. Many applications are affected with this kind of issues. Yeah, in Messenger, say for example, that I send a message. On iOS, I will be able to see a uh, read or not or, or sent, but not on Android. And I know this is not Google's fault, but because of all of this and because I'm addicted to braille screen input i use ios as my main operating system however i prefer the way that android is made for the reasons that i said and this is not said that you know i might put my sim card back into my pixel one of these days because some features of Android are missing to me. And I'm sure that's, that Android is missing to you, Alex. Uh, right now, uh, I prefer to stay on iOS due to all these reasons. And we were talking about the keyboard a bit earlier. The on-screen keyboard sometimes also cause issues with TalkBack. It's not... I was joking because I know you ate Android. <laughs> you wanted even to throw your pixel through the window. Oh yes, bang! Yeah, that would be a good fish. Oh yes, for sure. Uh, <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, also on Android, another bug that I'm having often because I'm using third-party apps to receive calls. Let's see if your IP calls, Skype calls. Sometimes I'm just unable to turn off the ringtone to answer the call using TalkBack because the ringtone will be louder than talkback voice so i'll be unable to see who is calling and click the answer button and also when being on a call there's no way to switch between the uh, speaker and the inset so there's a way to do it 
but you need a third party application to do it. Yeah, it's not native. And uh, same thing when handing a call, you have the possibility to configure that the power button hang up the call or disconnect the call. However, when doing this, when you're on a call, you are not sure if the phone is unlocked or not, you can easily disconnect the caller. So I got disconnect several times with the uh, by mistake. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes I was not sure if my phone was unlocked or not and I press the power button and oops, I hand the call. Anything else about uh, iOS and Android? Well, um, even though we said a lot of bad things about accessibility, this is usable. I mean, I used it every day um, for more than for more than a year, yeah, and I continue to use it. I mean, this is usable. And Google are making some efforts. They are taking it seriously. They have some work to do, I agree. But Android is usable. And if you're used, I mean, gestures in two motions, when you get, when you become... Let's say familiar. Yeah, when you become familiar with these, I mean, it's not hard. Once you're familiar, I mean, I prefer the edit mode on Android, but it's a question of preference. Sure, I think so, and as well for the keyboard. By the way, please note that there's no two input mode like on iOS, the touch typing as well as the um, default typing where you yeah. need where you need to raise your finger and double tap each letter, you'll not have this possibility on Android. Yes, you will on Samsung phones. Yes, maybe only uh, these phones, but if you are having LG, Pixel, Motorola, anything else, it's not going to be possible. You'll have to drag your finger on the screen, find the appropriate letter, then raise it. So I think that concludes this podcast. Uh, let us know which one between these two operating systems is your favorite. Uh, don't hesitate to tell us why do you prefer one uh, over the other, what you like about these, what you don't like. And if you have a specific question regarding a certain feature, don't hesitate to contact us. We'd like to hear from you. I know it's a very, very large subject, but we are just trying to give you a bit of information if you would like to purchase a cell phone or tablet in the future. So you'll have a bit more information. But if you have some questions or need some training, we are here to help. So I guess we will talk another time and it's always good to see you face to face oh no true we can't see each other yes for sure so <laughs> yes uh, we cannot see each other but uh yeah it's it was really uh, uh, cool to be able to record some podcasts together and I think we'll be able to do so maybe a bit later this summer yeah so thank you so much for listening wherever you might be we hope that you enjoyed it and feel free to subscribe to our podcast feed as well as on the youtube channel you will have all of the details at the end of the podcast yes and talk to you soon bye for now before the end of this podcast i would like to say you thank you for your loyalty to this series of podcasts on assistive technologies i would also like to thank our loyal collaborator as a reminder i would like to inform you that canadialog will not provide free technical support on product presented during these shows and that are not sold directly 
by Kenny Dialog. Please note that our podcasts are now available on our website, YouTube, iTunes, as well as on Victor Devices by consulting the North American English suggested podcast list from Humanware. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can contact us via email at podcastwitness at kennydialogue.com that is p-o-d-c-a-s-t-s at c-a-n-a-d-i-a-l-o-g dot com or by phone on our toll-free number at 1-888-730-0003 again 1-888-730-0003 extension 555 extension 555 I also invite you to visit our website, which contains a lot of useful information at www.kennydialogue.com. You can also visit us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Thanks for listening.